Hey everybody, this is Cole Name Conover and today is Operation Jengai Sushi. And today we're so excited to be here, here because this restaurant has more than 20 years Japanese traditional with a modern take on their excellent dishes. So head over to 5665 Silver Creek Valley yeah, if you want some amazing Japanese dishes. Let's go. So here what we have is edamame, a classic Japanese appetizer. Okay, try one of those. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get something. All right, one, three, you ready? One, two, three. Mmm. You taste that? Mmm. What we have here? edamame without the garlic. This is sake right here. I can tell you what kind later. All I know is it tastes good. I think the water's on the side, huh? Mmm. Maybe you gotta try one of these. Yeah. Yeah, you had to double bite that down. So I want you guys to know a fun fact about this little guy right here. This is edamame. It's a soybean that comes from East Asia. Usually served with salt or other continents. And it's not actually any salt. It's washed in salt water. Pretty lights. Wait, babe, what are you doing? This is good. Well, look at this picture. Mm, this is good. The decorations here are just nice. Mm, it's too good. Look at those fish sculptures. Mm, this is good. This is too good. Wait, you're not even in the restaurant anymore. It's good. Yeah. As you guys know, I'm usually a soju guy, but this place has the best sake. What you guys didn't know about sake is that this is a fermented rice that's been polished down to remove the brand. It's just fermented rice. And it's so goddamn good. and this is Operation Ginga Sushi. Now I'm sitting with Yvonne. It's a pleasure to have an interview with her. Thank you. She's gonna tell us a little bit about sushi Japanese culture and this restaurant itself. So Yvonne, when was this place founded and how was it founded? So this place in general, this whole plaza that you're in is going to be built from the ground up 20, about 21 years ago to almost, we've been here for almost 22 years in August. So this was founded by my parents. Um, the plaza is not founded by our parents. Build this restaurant from the ground up with the landlords that were previously owning this plaza. So 22 years ago, they wanted to come over and they wanted to create some really great sushi because we didn't have that here in San Jose. Yeah. And I mean, even if you look at the neighborhoods right now, half of these neighborhoods weren't even there um, 20 years ago. True, true. So even Evergreen, if you go down the street, if you're familiar with the San Jose area, mm -hmm. Evergreen down the street was barely getting built up and that's when they're deciding if it should be San Jose or Evergreen or whatever and wanted to bring a great sushi restaurant to San Jose. Based... Which they did. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, because um, they, they used to know Japanese cuisine throughout their whole life. Um, my uncles, my aunts, they were bringing it from the East Coast and then they taught the Japanese culture to my parents and then they wanted to extend it here in San Jose because they ended up staying here for their permanent home or so. So are your so. parents initially from Japan? Not from Japan. Yeah, they're from Vietnam. Oh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> that's a little plot to get taught that at a very young age. Not only that, like my parents were immigrant parents. They were able to be taught from other great sushi chefs in their lifetime. Because, I mean, being a sushi chef in general, it's very hard to even get into that position. It takes years and years of practice just to be it's able like to- eat tummy or something? Yeah, just yeah. to be able to actually roll a, a nigiri piece, or it was nice that our family was able to even adopt or adapt to their culture and try to bring it over here and kind of bless a lot of people in the community. Really? Seriously? Because 20 years ago, like, no, there was probably a handful of sushi places, but they're spread all over San Jose. 
20 years ago. So Everyone's that was a, like vineyards. Yeah, <laughs> for a really long time. And um, and I think it was a beautiful thing. And they were being started popping up. We weren't, they were immigrant parents and they just knew the skill. So fresh fish, quality, and that's what at least we still have that weird, we never let go of. The quality of fish. You gotta pay attention to that right there. <laughs> Seriously, that's the moral of the story right here. Yeah. If you have the skills, you can pay the bills. Yeah, quality yeah. products. That's what yeah. it is. Quality. You know, what would you say personally makes this sushi unique? I could answer that. Confidence, because our sushi is unique because we bring a creativity um, to our sushi. But not only that, our number one thing that we never let go of was freshness. Yes. Um, the quality of our sushi, our grade of sushi, whether it's if we could get a certain case or uh, if we could get it from Japan or if we get it locally sourced, whichever is the best of the best, that's what we try. And I think that at a, as a young age, we grew up from learning that from my parents. Like they, they were always, you know, I really seen business growing up from their eyes because they were always denying uh, bad cuts or this fish wasn't good or this fish was a little bit too small or whichever. So they definitely just stood your ground when it comes to the quality of sushi, the quality of it. So that's definitely something that stands out. And a lot of people, a lot of sushi places can say that, but I honestly, I mean, you can taste it for yourself, right? And that's what I was just talking <laughs> yeah. about. I'm from the East Coast, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been to a lot of different kind of restaurants. And honestly, the format of the restaurants is they make the food, it sits, and the people come get it, and they may warm it up for you. I've seen yeah. sushi restaurants where the sushi's just there. Literally, as you guys are seeing the video, they're making it right now. It yeah. look like they killed the fish in the back and just started making <laughs> it. Um, I know. We cure a lot of our own fishes. If we could get it fresh, we'll cure it ourselves. Just so we know that the quality itself is good to stand for a while or, or whichever that is to our liking. So that's for us. Like it keeps us very confident and positive. Our ability to like just serve the right the right type of freshness and everything that we want to present to everybody eating here. So there you have it, guys. That's Yvonne, <laughs> and this is Ging Guys. Can you please give us a shout out here? Tell us. Uh, any plug you want. Tell us anything that you want to keep Gingo Sushi, I mean, come and enjoy some very fresh sushi. We have um, beautiful guests, and it's really nice to kind of um, get to serve everybody in a quality way. And 5665 Silver Creek Valley Road in San Jose, California. And check this out. Gingo means Silver Creek. You know how I know that? Because yes. I, I know that. You know that. <laughs> she told us. Before we take our next shot here, I just want to tell everybody there, thank you for your love and support. Thank you for always liking, commenting, and subscribing. And this is a toast and a shot to you guys. Itadakimasu. Oh. Yeah. I believe okay. so, yes. Okay. I'll get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So here we have our sushi boat. Here we have everything. Because it's fresh <laughs> off the boat. Anything you could possibly get in this restaurant is right here in this boat. We and have then, some salmon, some tuna. We have some, cod. We have these spicy These amazing salmon. oysters with tobacco on it. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, this is the real deal right here. We need some soy sauce and let's dig right in. Low sodium? Look, oh, and they got my favorite right here. You see this? Oil flour. You're not supposed to eat the decorations, babe. It's going now. We got some low sodium kikoman soy sauce. So, I want you to break down, right, for people in their first time having sushi. What is the difference in between these two? This one, the green one's low sodium, and this one's regular. Yeah, put that on the side. You need low sodium over there. What are you trying first, babe? I'm gonna try um, what I'm looking at, the oysters first. Listen, I need for y'all not to judge me. I have not eaten all day and it's around five o'clock at night. So if I run through this food, yes, I do have a job and I'm not 
But wait, before you even start, you know eating oysters is a natural aphrodisiac. Eat that oyster. Ooh. Mmm. Oh my god. Oysters are definitely 10 out of 10. Yeah, you only want this one. Let me try it out for you. We should have rock, paper, scissors mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'll go for you. Mm -hmm. I was tasting it to see if it had poison or anything. That's why. Okay, you clear your that. palate with some ginger. That's what the ginger is for. For those of you that just tuned in, we explained it in our last sushi video, but when you get that big glob of white stuff over there, it's called shredded ginger, and it's there to cleanse your palate. It also helps when you're eating a lot of raw fish. Salmon sashimi is next. Lightly dipped in some low sodium soy sauce. Yeah, that's a light dip to me. Because yeah. <laughs> we like to sop it up. Don't hold on, let me get some too. Okay. Let me put it down. Mm. 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 Oh. oh my god. Yes. So what we have here is a tekamaki roll. Opposed to the usual rolls, this one is a lot smaller, so it usually only has one ingredient. And for our taste tester today, we have Natasha. No, I'm rich. <laughs> Seriously though, can you tell the difference between something, the regular rolls like this where you get three ingredients in there, or do you like the smaller rolls? You want to try this one out and compare it? Yeah. Let's, let's put a little bit of sauce on there. Babe, okay. try the avocado roll. Or was it not? Believe it or not, this thing is actually pretty good. And to be honest, I look at everything from a health standpoint, right? And this will probably get be the healthiest way you could get a person to eat avocado. Because it's coupled in with rice, some nice sesame street. Start out for yourself. And uh, just to let you know, it's going to be a biased opinion coming from her because she's Dominican. I'm the best in <laughs> What I told y'all. I could just eat that all day long. Yeah, I told you. Oh, what is that? <laughs> so this is a classic Japanese drink. It's lychee flavor, but then there's a, we have a ton of flavors. Lychee, milk, and I think they have orange and grape, but we only have those right now. I've seen a, this originated in 1884. Yeah, a lot of people right now, they collect the marbles in there. I don't know. There's a marble yeah, in there? Yeah, so what you do is you open this, um, there's a little seam, you zip it, love it. Yeah, so they had the work so to get it, huh? Yeah. Okay. You take that to and a <laughs> oh, 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 that's so cool. <laughs> I'm not a little <laughs> Look at the marbles right there. Try it, it tastes so good. <laughs> so guys, wasabi, if you guys didn't know, real traditional wasabi is actually really, really expensive. Why you may ask? Because the root for one is very hard to find, but they actually grind it on shark skin. And that's how they make it into a paste like this. And you never want to get the wasabi and mix it in your soy sauce. You want to get a little piece like this and place it on your fish and eat it just like this. And then you can get your soy sauce, dip the fish in it, and enjoy. And that's how you properly eat sushi. Yeah, if you want to do it the proper way, but I'm not a gentleman, I'm a method man, okay? Me? A young player like me? Yeah. I just eat the wasabi straight up, you know what I mean? Because I spit hot fire, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Mm. So, while I'm eating this wasabi, let me tell you a story. Wasabi is naturally a preservative. As she said earlier, it's a root that they grind down into a paste and it becomes hot. In Japan, in the feudal era, when people were so poor because of the war that was going on, people were forced to eat wasabi roots. As an adverse reaction, a lot of them started to age way beyond the time that they should have been in a time like that. And it was literally because the wasabi was a preservative. 
Yeah, don't ask me how I know that. I know stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this one's already hot. You look. Yeah, I'm going in with my hands for this one. You gotta get it how you live. When you gonna eat your wasabi raw? My wasabi what? Mm -hmm. Raw. Like I did. I don't need to do that. Why not? Because I don't need to. But Sneak will want to see it. <laughs> That's the best y'all get. I tried this motherfucker. Saki is, but maybe my eyes can. Okay, so let's do some categories real quick. Let's start with one presentation is one to ten, one thousand. Yeah. Did y'all see the sushi boat? Look at the boat. Do y'all see the decorations Look, here? this is not a part of the, the table. This is a real boat they made. When they say sushi boat, they mean the fish came off this boat no after they caught it. And for number two, let's go taste and flavor. A 10,000 out of one out of 10. Uh, dead serious. You guys seen the last video. This place is, this is everything. I'm sorry. I, I don't really have a negative review to give this. Besides the fish being fresh, each and individual certain item has such a quality taste that you really can't find at different sushi restaurants in San Francisco. Because as Yvonne told us earlier, it all is fresh. So you're going to have to wait your time for your delivery. But guess what? The time is well spent. Because when you get a sushi boat like this, that's down the Ginga Sushi. ASAP 5665 Silver Creek Valley Road, San Jose, California. The shit's off the hook. <laughs> <laughs>